Today we're going to practice uh, writing formulas for ionic compounds. Now in order to complete this lesson you're going to need a copy of the handout uh, titled Writing Formulas for Ionic Compounds and you're also going to need the one that says Common Ions and Their Formulas. Now when we start talking about uh, about these uh, substances, we, we learned last time that ionic compounds are composed of ions. And so we know that there are two main types of ions. We have uh, cations and we have anions. And so you might remember from uh, a, a previous chapter that cations have a positive charge, whereas anions have a negative charge. Now these ions are held together by what's called electrostatic charge. Basically the attraction of a positive to a negative is what holds these ionic compounds together. That's an extremely uh, powerful force and that's why ionic compounds tend to have uh, very high melting points and they're usually solids because they have that very strong force between them. Now you have uh, a a handout titled Common Ions and Their Formulas. This is an ion chart and you'll notice that on the left side we have cations and on the right side we have anions. Uh, every time we have an ionic compound there's going to be a cation written first and then an anion written second. So for example we have NaCl uh, Na is the metal, that's the cation, has a positive charge. And the chloride, the Cl negative, that's got a negative charge and it's always written second. So the cation is always written first and the anion is written second. Now on your chart, uh, you'll notice that uh, there's a vocabulary word, actually a couple of vocabulary words used here. We have the word monatomic, that's written quite a bit there, and we also have polyatomic ions. Now hopefully you know that the prefix M-O-N-O, -O, mono or mon, basically means one. And so anytime you have a monatomic ion, you'll notice that they all have one atom in them. On the other hand, polyatomic ions, uh, that, w that prefix poly means many, and so a polyatomic ion will have many uh, atoms in there. So sometimes a polyatomic ion will have uh, two atoms. Sometimes they'll have as many as uh, uh, seven or eight. That, that happens sometimes. And so those are the ions. Now you are going to have to learn some of these ions. You're going to have a quiz over these 12 ions, uh, perchlorate uh, all the way down through phosphate. Now there's no, uh, this is a list of those. You might want to highlight them on your ion chart or write them down in some other way. Uh, here in a few days you'll uh, have a quiz over them. Uh, this quiz is going to be uh, in, in a format very similar to the ones that you would normally have over uh, names and symbols of elements that we had earlier in the year. On half of these I'm going to give you the name and you have to write the formula. On the other half I'm going to give you the formula and you'll have to write the name. So you might want to uh, develop some flashcards or some other method to learn these 12 ions. Now there are some patterns that you might want to be aware of. Uh, for example, notice that the main difference between chlorate and chlorite, they're identical except for one thing. Chlorite has one less oxygen atom than chlorate. Other than that it's identical. Notice the difference between nitrate and nitrite. Nitrate and nitrite are identical except nitrite has one less oxygen atom in it. Same thing for sulfate and sulfite. The two formulas are identical except sulfite has one less oxygen. So this can help you to learn some of these. If you know the formula for the 8 version of the ion, then you can figure out the formula for the ite version of the ion because it's just going to have one less oxygen. So you'll have a quiz over these 12 here in a few days. 
Now this uh, list of rules, this is how to write formulas for ionic compounds. You have a handout for this. It is titled writing, Com uh, writing Formulas for Ionic Compounds. You'll want to refer to this as we go through the next several examples. Well, speaking of that, let's go ahead and, and do some examples. Here's the first one. We have calcium sulfide. Now, the first step says note the name of the cation and write its formula. The cation is always the first word in an ionic name. So calcium, as I hope you know, has the symbol Ca. So we're going to write that down. And step two says make a note of its charge. Now you can look at the periodic table and see that calcium uh, is in group two and should have a plus two charge. Or you can look right at your ion chart and notice that calcium has a little plus two next to it. So I'm going to write that down. It has a plus two charge. Step three says note the name of the anion and write its formula. Well sulfide is S. You write that down. And step four says make a note of its charge. So uh, we look at the ion chart on the right side of the page and next to sulfide we have a negative two charge. Or you can look at the periodic table and see that it's in group 16 and those tend to be negative two. So the next step is uh, number five. It says if the absolute values of the charges are equal, you are finished. Well, what that means is we have a positive two and a negative two and those absolute values are the ch are are the same and so they cancel each other out and so that means we are done. The, the formula for this is just CAS and so that's the answer to this. Let's try another example. Here we have sodium oxide. Once again the first step is note the name of the cation and write its uh, symbol. So sodium is Na and the charge of that is a positive one we see that either by looking at the periodic table or by looking right at your ion chart. There's a little plus next to Na. Then the anion is oxide, so that's O. And step four says make a note of its charge. So I see a, a two negative for oxide. Now step five says if the absolute values of the charges are equal, you are finished. Well, a plus one does not cancel out with a negative two, so we can't do that. We're going to have to go on to step six. It says if the charges are not equal, swap the charges on the ions using the charges as subscripts. So that means this one is going to go down here as a subscript on oxygen. Of course, we normally don't write ones, so we can leave that out. And then this two right here is going to become the subscript on the sodium. So our formula for sodium oxide is Na2O. And when you look at that, it tells us that this uh, formula unit is going to have two sodium ions and one oxygen or oxide ion. Let's go on to another example. Here we have nickel 2 phosphide. Now sometimes students get a little worried when they see that Roman numeral. This is just giving us some additional information that's actually going to help us out. Now nickel, uh, the first step says to write the symbol for that. Nickel of course is Ni. And then step two says make a note of its charge. Uh, well if you look at your ion chart you'll see that there are two listings for nickel. There's one that says nickel 2 and there's one that says nickel 3. And this one of course is nickel 2 and what's the charge of nickel 2? Well it's plus 2. Basically that Roman numeral is just telling you what the charge is. So that's giving you some nice information there to write the formula. So that's plus 2. And then phosphide well, according to our ion chart, phosphide is P, and it has what charge? Well, it's in group uh, 15, so it's 3 negative. Our ion chart tells us that also. So, are the absolute values of the charges equal? No, they're not. So that means we're going to have to swap the charges. So the 2 is going to go down here on the phosphorus, and the 3 is going to be the subscript on nickel. So the formula is Ni3. P2. Here's another example. We have cesium hydroxide. 
Once again, what's the uh, name of cesium, or the formula for cesium rather? It's CS. It's charge. We see on the ion chart it is a positive 1. So we'll write that down. And then hydroxide. Now if you look on the right side of your ion chart, hydroxide is um, about halfway down the page, and it's OH. It's actually a polyatomic ion, and it has a negative 1 charge. I've tried to group all the negative 1 ions together and all the negative 2 ions together so that it's easy to, to see that. Uh, now, do the absolute values of the charges seem to be equal? Well, they are, so that means we're done. The answer is just CSOH, since they cancel out. Let's try another example. Here we have tin 2 nitrate. Now, what's the symbol for tin? It's SN. And what's the charge on that? Well, this 2 tells us that its charge is a 2 positive. And what about nitrate? What's its formula? Well, if you look at the ion chart about uh, on the right side, about halfway down the page, you see that nitrate has a formula of NO3. And we need to make a note of its charge. It is negative 1. So do those cancel out? No, they don't. So we have to swap them. The 1 goes down here. Of course, we don't normally write 1s for SN, but the 2 is going to have to become the, the subscript on nitrates. We write that there. Now, it looks like we have a kind of a strange looking number here because it looks like the formula is SNNO32. And uh, that's, that's not what we mean to say here. This is where step number 7 comes in on your writing formulas handout. There it says, if placing a subscript on a polyatomic ion, place parentheses around the polyatomic ion. So that means we need to put parentheses around NO3. And you can see a couple reasons for that. It's going to keep the uh, number from looking like a 32. Also, it's going to show that this 2 right here applies uh, not only to the oxygen, but it also applies to the nitrogen right here. And so uh, when we want to ask how many atoms we have in a formula unit of this compound, well, we have one tin atom, of course. How many nitrogens do we have? Well, there's one, but it's multiplied by two, and so we actually have two nitrogen atoms. And how many oxygens do we have? Well, it's three times two, so there are six oxygen atoms. Whatever is inside the parentheses is multiplied by what's outside the parentheses. So one uh, formula unit of this compound has a total of nine atoms. Six plus two plus one gives us uh, nine. Let's try another example. Silver phosphate. Now step one says note the name of the cation and write its symbol. So silver is AG. Step two says make a note of its charge. About the bottom of the left side of the page shows us that silver is positive one. Phosphate, an anion, that's the very last ion on the right side of the page. It's PO4. Its charge is three negative. Do the charges cancel out? No, they don't. So that means we have to swap them. So this 3 right here will become the subscript for silver. And the 1, well, we don't have to write 1s. So that's our answer, AG3PO4. Notice that we do not have to put parentheses around the PO4 because we're not writing an additional subscript on that. Here's another example. Here we have ammonium chromate. This is kind of a... A, a tougher one here. Ammonium, the, the formula for ammonium is NH4. And we see that at the bottom left hand corner of the ion chart. And what is its charge? Well, it's 
one positive. What's the formula for chromate? Well, that's toward the bottom of the, the right-hand side of the page. It's CrO4, and its charge is 2 negative. So do we have to swap these? Yes, we do, because those do not cancel out. Plus 1 and minus 2 uh, do not cancel out. So the 2 needs to go right down here. And it looks like NH42, so what do you think we need? Parentheses. I'm going to put parentheses around the ammonium ion there. And that's the formula. Now, what if I asked you how many atoms are in that formula right there? How many atoms are in a formula unit of ammonium chromate? Think about that. This is a, a tougher question. Remember, what's inside the parentheses gets multiplied by what's outside the parentheses. So if you add those up, I hope you see that we have 15 atoms total. Do you see 15 atoms? Well, let's see. Nitrogen, there's understood to be a 1 right here, but we multiply it by 2. So there are 2 nitrogen atoms. How many hydrogens? Well, 4 times 2 is 8. So we have 8 of those. We only have one chromium. There's no subscript there. And we have four oxygens. And so when you add those together, we get a total of 15 atoms in a formula unit of ammonium chromate. Let's try another example. Titanium 2 chloride. Now this one, uh, for some students, might be a little bit tougher, simply because titanium is not on the ion chart. But that's okay, we can still do this one. Titanium has what symbol? Well, it's Ti. And what's the charge on titanium 2? Well, you're right, if you said 2, that 2 right there tells us it's a positive 2. Your ion chart is not a complete list of all the ions that have ever existed in the universe. This is just a list of the most common ions. Now, chlorite, the symbol for that, I know that's one you have to learn for the quiz in a few days. As you see on the page, it's ClO2, and its charge is negative 1. So do they cancel out? Nope, they do not, so that means we have to swap the charges. So the 1, well, you don't write the 1, but the 2 goes right down here, and looks like we need parentheses. Otherwise, that's going to look like a 22, and we want the 2 to apply the, to the entire polyatomic ion. So there's our answer for titanium 2 chloride. Let's try one last example. Dinitrogen trifluoride. Well, don't get stumped. I want you to notice that this formula is very different from all the other formulas that we've had so far today in this discussion because we have prefixes. We learned those prefixes earlier in this chapter and we learned that di means 2 and tri means 3. And so we don't have to worry about any uh, ions here. If it has ions, we use the ion chart if it has numerical prefixes, we just use those instead. So dinitrogen is N2, trifluoride is F3. And so that's the answer, N2F3. So remember, if we have numerical prefixes, we use those. If we have ions, we use the ion chart. Well, this is the end of our discussion about writing uh, formulas, focusing on writing ionic formulas.